Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and welcome to the final instalment of the world's most ridiculous concourse level detail and finally after over 200 hours we get to put the focus back together. If you haven't watched the previous 6 episodes to this crazy detailing series then be sure to check them out and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already then please consider subscribing. I will be making separate videos covering the undercarriage deep clean rust converter treatment and the underbody preservation alongside the wheels off detail arch treatment inclusive of cleaning and protecting all arch liners underbody tray and also the brake caliper refurbishment video. I thought it would be nice to include putting the focus back together in this video for you guys to see. It's safe to say that the focus has come on a long way in the past 200 hours of labour and I'm very thankful that the car is almost finished. The under tray for the engine bay has been deep cleaned and protected with two layers of lithium trim serum. There's a handful of Torx bolts to fasten the tray on and I have bought myself a brand new set of Torx bolts and fasteners for all arch liners including the under tray. The arch liners were next to be fitted and I'm going to hold back on the footage for these particular areas as I'd rather go into more detail in their specific videos. I can't seem to find any footage of refitting the fabric rear arch liners though, which is a shame. Nevertheless, the arch liners are now looking fantastic and if you do tune into the specific videos when they get released, you will see that these areas have also been transformed in their condition. With the arch liners and under tray fastened up tightly with the brand new screws and fasteners, the wheels can go back on the car for the first time in 3 weeks. The wheels have already been ceramic coated with 2 layers of Geotanic C5 wheel armour with the most recent layer being done since this big detail began. A small amount of copper grease is applied to the wheels to keep them from sticking to the 25mm spaces and then the wheels can be put on the car and the bolts are tightened by hand. A second layer of Swissfax Pneu tie dressing which is allowed to dry naturally for a rich satin finish is always better than one layer. This process was carried out on each corner of the car which really did make for a nice change as I could finally see the finish line in sight. The focus is being built with a track car inspiration so the TRS toe straps are definitely going back on. The toe straps themselves, the fabric parts, have been dosed with Geotanic i1 smart fabric so they will repel water and dirt just like the bodywork. I decided to use up the rest of the built hamber rust converter product on the areas of the underside of the car where the trolley jack and the axle stance had originally been placed. Quite literally on this car, no areas have been left untouched. The exhaust was in a pretty bad condition before I started the detail and I will show you the detailing process that it underwent in the undercarriageway preservation video, but it really does look super shiny and mirror like now that it's all been polished and ceramic coated. This was the best task that I did with the car, taking it off the axle stands, touching up those missed areas of chassis and dropping the car back on the ground, although it was quite the precarious process to do. The final steps were to apply Swissfax seal feed to the rubber seals to give them some much needed moisture and a darker finish. All plastics, which is very minimal on the Focus RS Mark II, were treated to lithium trim serum. I applied these products to the car a few days ago and given them a decent amount of time to become bonded and absorbed into the rubber and plastic surfaces. Unfortunately within those few days Storm Dennis left his mark in the unit and completely flooded it out. The car was 99% finished at this point and all I had left to do was to remove the excess plastic and rubber product residue from the applicable surfaces. During the clean up of the flood damage caused by Storm Dennis well it kicked up a load of dry and muddy dust whilst I vacuumed the unit and a lot of it settled on the car. 
Fortunately for me, the ceramic coatings will protect the paintwork from a light dust down, but due to the duster being a little moist as it's kept in the unit and the flood damage practically got everywhere slightly moist, it ended up leaving various areas on the car slightly hazy. I'm honestly not making up any excuses for any shoddy work on the car, but I didn't want to take a microfiber towel to the paint just to take the before and after photos and footage. I thought it best to dust the car down the best I could and then give it a first proper clean a few weeks down the line. After the unit was cleaned up and when the car had been given a gentle dust down and the removal of the Swissfax and Lithium products excess had been finished, the car was essentially finished. I fitted the Sparco QRT fixed back bucket seats and the TRS fighter pilot harnesses after they'd been protected with G-Technic i1 smart fabric, which I will make a separate video on. Looking back at the finished footage, I can see a few smears and random areas of haze in the paint, but I can assure you that they are simply there because the car was dusted down with a slightly moist detailing duster. Not ideal, especially after over 200 hours of work. The paintwork itself has come on absolutely amazingly and I honestly couldn't be happier. The level of paint correction is near on perfect, it's just a shame I didn't manage to remove 100% of the orange peel. This has been my first attempt to the full body wet sand detail and I've learned so much by doing it. I can guarantee that the second car I do a full body wet sand detail on is going to be quite a bit better than this one. With the high-end detailing duties, with a full body wet sand detail being the pinnacle, it really is like making pancakes, you'll only get better and better. The gloss level on the Focus is utterly superb and I'd be very surprised after the length of time that went into the car and the finish that I've managed to achieve if I don't walk away with some sort of trophy from the many events that I plan to take the car to. The before footage shows a nice level of swirling in the paint and to be quite honest, the Focus did have a full set of paintwork imperfections and defects. All six major stages of the paintwork refinishing process has well and truly transformed the condition of the RS. Providing that this car is looked after with the correct products, tools and techniques, it will stay looking this way for many years to come. Other areas that I may not have covered within the YouTube narration or footage would be ceramic coating the door shuts and sills, the boot shuts and sills and even the exhaust tips and the exhaust box underneath, each of these received the three layers of G-Technic's finest ceramic. All gaps and crevices were cleaned out with either detailing swabs or toothpicks and all of the RS emblems had their chrome sections polished and carbon effect badges ceramic coated. By the time this video goes live, the only areas that haven't been protected or treated are underneath the door and boot rubber seals which need to be cleaned, IPA'd and ceramic coated as well as behind the rear lights. I also want to take the front and rear bumpers off the car and the side skirts so I can brush off any loose surface rust and then treat and protect the hidden areas with the built amber rust preservation products. Everywhere else on the car, and I literally mean everywhere else on the car, has been protected with G-Technic products that are going to last for between 3 to 5 years. I honestly couldn't be happier now that the focus is finished, I've dreamed about having one of these cars for the past 10 years. The detail wasn't plain sailing, but the reason why I've chose my own vehicle to complete the first full body wet sand detail on is because I wanted to eat the first pancake, and a few edges with it. The first one is always the worst, not to say that I did a bad job, but they'll only get better. I want to show you what the pinnacle of car care is all about and to be quite honest the sky really is the limit with detailing. When I started this detailing series I had the mindset of yes, this car is going to be prepared to a concourse standard and it will win concourse the elegance. Soon after starting the detail and realising that actually a concourse level vehicle of this age would need to undergo a complete nut and bolt restoration, well it's turned my little Bew Beauty into possibly one of the best presented show cars in the UK. I'll leave you with some final footage after the ridiculous concourse level detail or perhaps it should have been called the ultimate show car detail and please feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm going to continue working on the aesthetic condition and appearance of the focus so essentially all visible bits here and there including various nuts and bolts, pipes and tubing, dents and chips. So when the show season does begin I will stand a good chance of winning something even if it's a kick in the balls or a punch in the dick. I will compare the paint depth readings before and after, but I haven't taken the footage yet and the car is now absolutely filthy. 
I will update you in a following video, perhaps even in the first washing video in terms of the paint depth readings and also how much time went into each of the major stages of this crazy detail series. As always, thank you for watching. Please drop the video a like for my 10 out of 10 effort. I hope to see you at some car shows this year, providing that COVID-19 does one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram. Just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.